religiously the numbers of new cases in Nashville, and there's been a slight uptick as there has been around the country. And that doesn't mean that I am worried that things will fall apart, but it does mean that just continuing to emphasize caution and discipline are good topics uh, to broach at assemblies each week. So the fall break uh, doesn't mean that I'm scared that people are going to go all over. And, 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 and just because someone travels, it doesn't mean that there will be problems. But it does mean that if you're not cautious, the problems could multiply. So whatever you're doing this coming week, I hope it will be a, a time to relax and, and enjoy a break. But I also am counting on all of us to, to make good decisions wherever we are so that we, when we come back, there will be a 10th and 11th and a 12th, et cetera, weeks at school. Uh, prior to fall break uh, is the PSAT. And I, I will say I've been pleased to hear so many of you tell me that you've been thinking about the test, that you've been looking at last year's test. Uh, the, the seniors can tell you how tough it's been to take standardized tests so that knowing that we have a standardized test and doing your best on it is just in your own self-interest and we hope uh, you will do well. There was a former math teacher here named Jim Shackelford and he was legendary for making these great announcements at assembly the week of the PSAT and the gist of the announcement was he just tried to provide a little bit of humor in reminding people about the test, something that you know is normally uh, a situation where we're slightly uptight because uh, the test counts for various uh, reasons. And he'd say, make sure you have five or six pencils in case you break four or five of them, you have an extra one. And, and I think, of course, his point is just being prepared, being organized, and being thoughtful about the week is important. And it also means, I think, if you follow up through Wednesday midday, you'll enjoy your break more because you will have said to yourself, I did what I needed to do this week. I did it as well as I can. And now I can enjoy some time off. Our seniors are also in the middle of a lot of college applications. As underclassmen, you can learn a lot from just watching them. Think about uh, the essays they're writing, think about the ways they're uh, contemplating applying to school and why. Uh, so this is a good time just to stay alert and aware of what's going on around you. I'd like to congratulate uh, Mr. Harlan Dotson and his wife, Laura. Uh, they uh, both enjoyed the birth of their son. Uh, Harlan Vincent, uh, this weekend he was 20.5 inches long, 8.2 pounds, ounces. Let's uh, congratulate him. He's not here today, but we'll, we'll see him in the next assembly. I'd also like to thank uh, Alex and Peyton for the work they did for the breast cancer walk. Uh, unfortunately, the rain uh, came our way on Saturday morning, but that meant uh, that uh, the, the race or the walk went on and uh, a number of people uh, were certain to have uh, good participation, like the eighth grade football team was there, uh, a number of others I saw, and I appreciated all of you who were in attendance. Yesterday afternoon in the theater, we had the fall music recital. Uh, we were concerned about how we could do a music program, but the music teacher suggested that we come here to the theater, we could have a bigger crowd, and, and enjoy the physical distancing because the room's larger rather than doing it in the Dead Poet Society room as we normally do. We were all pleased by the quality of the music, and we were very happy to see a, a great audience there. And, and we have a treat for us this morning. Uh, one of the songs that uh, was performed yesterday by the Big Red Rhythm, uh, the so song is called Cold Duck Time by Eddie Harris. Join me in welcoming the uh, Big Red Rhythm to assembly today. <laughs>
Saturday afternoon. I appreciated all the music yesterday, and it's nice to have a little bit of an assembly today. Uh, the next uh, agenda is uh, related to an announcement I made at assembly a few weeks ago suggesting that we would welcome input about an idea or ideas you had about a, a photograph we would put up in the Lowry building in an area where we've uh, placed important moments of each decade of the 20th and now the 21st century. And I said that we were at the juncture where we were waiting, we, we needed to put up something for the second decade of the 21st century. Overwhelmingly, the interest among you uh, was social media. And I'll read the script uh, that we've placed or will place up there. It says, between 2010 and 2019, Facebook and Twitter, among other networking platforms, attract staggering numbers of users and act as a forum for social, cultural, and political life. Throughout this decade, social media plays a vital role in massive protest movements, including the Arab Spring, the Me Too movement, the Hong Kong protest, and racial justice protest across the United States. Facebook doubles its user count from 1 billion in 2012 to 2 billion in 2015. Simultaneously, Apple becomes the most valuable company in the world in 2012, thanks in large part to its iPhone. And then a bit of a subtext where you see that iPhone in the image. Technology companies grapple with issues of diversity and inclusion while designing their products. One example is Apple's addition in 2015 of racially diverse emojis, which allow users to customize animated characters' shades of skin. So what we tried to do in putting this together was incorporate a number of your suggestions all under the banner of social media. So some of you, for example, uh, recommended that we uh, highlight racial justice or the Hong Kong uh, protest. And we felt that it was all under that banner of social media and that's why we made this uh, final choice. Uh, in a similar topic, uh, the faculty and staff have recommended uh, to Ms. McMahon a number of uh, ideas about the all school read for next year. If, and, uh, and I thought it'd be a good idea to suggest to the students as well, if you have uh, suggestions to give them to our librarian, Ms. McMahon, we'd, we'd like to have those suggestions by the end of October. So um, this is my appeal today at assembly to do so. Uh, please just turn in, you can email her or go see her in the library, just see Ms. McMahon. Uh, I'm going to now ask uh, Mr. Paoliki to come up. Uh, this is some news that is uh, not old, but just we hadn't had a chance to announce it, and he's going to talk about the language awards. Good morning, everyone. Typically, this uh, presentation is done in the spring, in May. But due to the pandemic, we did not get the results for many of these competitions until well into the summer. So I am here today to present the national language exams for 2019-2020. You will see names up here of students who have graduated, as well as st many students who are still in here uh, at MBA. Um, I will start with Latin and Greek, then Chinese, French, German, and Spanish. Please hold your applause until we reach the end of each language. So I'll start with Latin. Uh, last March, um, MBA students, all MBA students taking Latin, participated in the National Latin Exam. On the screen behind me, you should see the results of that. And moving on to the next slide, we'd like to recognize these following individuals who received perfect papers on the national exams. So I will not read those names. I'll give you a moment to look at them. But I will highlight Andrew Bulgarino at the very bottom, who earned four consecutive gold medals on the National Latin Exam. So congratulations to Andrew. The next slide are all seniors who have graduated, but who took part in the National Greek Exam, but we'd like to recognize them as well. Then in addition to the National Latin Exam, many students participate in the Classical Association of the Middle, West, and South 
translation contest. And we have four winners on there, Reed Ragsdale and Adam Wang, Garrett Goodrum, and once again, Andrew Bulgarino. And finally, uh, this past spring, the many Latin students participated in the TJCL virtual convention, and they ended up being state champions. We'd like to uh, highlight some of their accomplishments, including first place in advanced kartaman, Wit Uden, who won best of show in grammar one and first place in Latin literature, Adam Wong, who was best in show for grammar two plus and first place in academic heptathlon and derivatives, and once again, Andrew Bulgarino for best of show and derivatives, first place in vocabulary. Let's please recognize all these Latin scholars. Now, Chinese is the one language that does not have a national contest, but this past year, Darren Hall was recommended by his teacher, Ms. Zhang, to participate in the uh, seventh class national speech contest. Darren was, only, was one of only 12 high school students who made it to the final competition. Let's recognize Darren for his accomplishments in Chinese. French, German, and Spanish all have national competitions. We'll start with French. On the screen behind me, you should see the results for the national French exam by medal winners. Moving into French one, these are the four students who placed nationally and in the state on the national French exam. Moving on to French two, these are the students who placed in the state and nationally on the French two exam. And moving on to French three and four, these are the students who placed both in the state and the national exam. And no, it's not a mistake, Andrew Bulgarino also appears in this competition. Let's recognize these French scholars. Next is German. On the screen behind me, you should see the results for the national German exam by medals. In German one, these are the results both in the state and nationally on the national German exam. As you can see, we have quite a few names up there, so we'll give you time to read them all. Next, for German two, these are the three students who placed in the state and nationally. Next is German three honors, and these are the students who placed in the state and nationally, and I would like to highlight Luke Murad, who got first in the state, and I believe he had a perfect score on the national German exam. And finally, for German four, Matt Hawkins also finished first in the state on the national German exam. Next, the German students also participate in a competition every spring called Frühlingsfest. It's a competition held at Vanderbilt University. And as you can see, the winners for the Gilbert Bowl and uh, both beginners and advanced levels are those individuals, as well as the baking competition. And then on the next slide, we have the other winners, including my advisee, Sam Alassi, for extemporaneous speaking. Evan Williams took first place for the level three, four extemporaneous speaking. And the advanced growth at Bull took home first place in the trivia, as well as the spending, uh, spelling bee beginners took first and second. Excuse me, first for uh, beginners and second for advanced. Please join me in recognizing these German scholars. Finally, for Spanish, we uh, received our results very late, in fact, late July. There are no state rankings, only national rankings, but for any student who received uh, gold, silver, or bronze, we do have medals for you, so your teacher will be emailing you to let you know where you can pick up your medals. These are the results for the national Spanish exam by, grade, by level. In Spanish one, classroom experience, Tommy Carson, 
and Matthew McMinn placed for outside experience. For Spanish 2, these are the students who, um, how they performed at, this, at the national level. I do need to highlight, even though we do not have state, state rankings, Reed Ragsdale earned a perfect score on the national Spanish exam for level 2, which is unheard of and has not happened ever, I think, and therefore he automatically would have tied for first place in the state had there been a state rankings. The next slide is for Spanish 2, a continuation of Spanish 2. Then following is the results for Spanish 3. And finally, the results for Spanish 4. Please join me in recognizing these Spanish scholars. I'd like, and I'd like to thank all of the students who participated in this competition. Uh, we always perform very well, so keep up the good work. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Spalik. Appreciate you and, and your presentation, and congratulations to all the, the, the uh, students recognized today. Um, next. Uh, I think Ian Drelli and Jack Spellman are going to come up and make an announcement about Best Buddies. Is that right? Okay. Thanks. Hey, guys. So uh, I'm Ian Drelli, and this is Jack Spellman. And we're project managers this year for NBA's chapter of Best Buddies. And his brother, Michael Spellman, is the uh, president for the chapter. And there's an upcoming event that we wanted to tell all you all about because most of our events have been virtual. Uh, and this is the friendship walk that we host at NBA every year. And I personally know a lot of friends that really love this event and look forward to it. But sadly, this year is going to be a little different. Uh, the participants are going to have a kind of like a parade. They're going to drive through the NBA lot. And so what we're trying to do is have a bunch of people at different stations give out T-shirts and Halloween goodie bags. It's going to be on October 31st. And so we're just trying to get a good crowd out. And so we'd really encourage a lot of you all to register online. And Jack's going to talk about how to register. Yeah, so in order to participate in, best, in like any event for Best Buddies, you have to sign up for NBA chef, on the NBA chapter on Best Buddies Online. And like, if you're interested in any like, of that, you can email me, Ian Durelli, or my brother, Michael. And, um, if, and um, everyone who wants to sign up for like the walk that is going to happen on October 31st, um, you need to go to bestbuddieswalknashville.org because it's online and everything. Um, you can hit register, which is in the purple box on the top of the web page. This will bring you to a form which you will fill out. When the form asks you to do either create or join a team, search Montgomery Bell Academy in the join team search box and hit join team. Lastly, the form will ask you for a donation. A small donation of like $10 will be like greatly appreciated for Best Buddies. Yeah, and uh, on the note of the donation, if you all make donations above $10, there are prizes you could get, such as sweatshirts and jackets and water bottles and coolers and things of that such. So uh, if you're interested, please make a donation and uh, also email me, Michael, or Jack. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ian and Jack, and uh, I'll reinforce this very briefly to say that last spring when we did the drive-by graduation program for the seniors and their families, it was really well received. And I can imagine, even though this is different, as you said, this could be a really fun event and probably won't take that long, it, so it wouldn't take that much time out of your day. But it would be a, a great way to make uh, these friends, these buddies, feel uh, terrific about our interest in them. So please see Ian or Jack or Michael or Miss Hollyfield, I guess, if you have questions about this event on October 31. Uh, Sam Bartholomew is going to make an announcement, and then Cooper and Charlie come on up. Hey, guys. I'm Sam Bartholomew and a member of Mr. Moxley's advisory. Uh, we're holding our annual Room the End book drive beginning this week and concluding Monday, October 26th. 
two weeks from today. I know it's going to be fall break, but please bring in your books. Uh, Room in the Inn is an organization located downtown on 8th Avenue that serves homeless men and women 365 days out of the year. The program offers emergency services, transitional programs, and long-term solutions to help people rebuild their lives. In addition, with the help of 180 um, congregations in Middle Tennessee and over 6,000 volunteers, Room in the Inn shelters over 1,400 men and women uh, in between the months of November 1st and March 31st. Among other services, at its downtown campus, Room in the Inn has a small library from which homeless guests, guests can borrow their books. Each year, MBA helps to restock these shelves. Um, so between now and Monday, please bring in novels, hardbacks, or, paper book, or, or paperbacks, and biographies, just no textbooks, um, to your advisor. Your advisor should have received a bag to put these books in, either last Friday or this morning. Uh, if you have any questions or if you don't have a paper bag yet, please email Mr. Moxley uh, and thank you for your support. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Cooper Raznicki, I'm the service club president for this year. So what I'd like to do here is uh, make a couple announcements about what's been going on. So we had our More Than Pink Walk uh, last Saturday. It was a great event. Um, special shout out to Peyton Green, Alex Wang, Mr. Killian, and Mr. Sanifer. Um, they fought through the rain, did a great job, made us $3,000. So uh, big help, so thank you for that. And then we've also had the uh, loaves and fishes uh, drives. We've made some goodie bags and done a bunch of good stuff there. So thank you for that as well. And then so for our upcoming events, um, Ian uh, alluded to the Best Buddies event. Um, it's going to be a really big deal, and we really need everyone's support. So if you could come out, um, that'd be sweet. And then we also have a work day for Mending Hearts coming up on November 7th. Um, and these both are going to be found on the Service Club website. So if you could go check it out, that'd be awesome, and we really appreciate your support. And now Charlie's going to talk. Hey, boys. Um, you all know that we usually have a drive for the Rally Foundation for Childhood Cancer Research. We do a few every year, but they're usually during sporting events. Um, obviously that cannot happen and so we have pivoted this year to a movie event. Um, this is actually exclusively for the junior schoolers. Um, it will take place on October 24th at 7 o'clock p.m. Um, we're going to have a package deal. You can buy your ticket, popcorn, a blanket, and a mask. Um, but since it's coming up you know, in a few weeks, we would love to have some junior school leadership to uh, mobilize support and to uh, get into service earlier. Um, also for Dance Marathon, we are going to start having Zooms with um, some of the kids from the hospitals. Um, we want to build the relationship between the school and the hospital, and we hope to do so through um, you know, events like movies um, on Zoom with the actual kids. Um, so look in your emails and, uh, for more information. All right, thank you. Our cross-country team uh, teams uh, raced this past week. The microbes continued to do really well. They swept in their meet in Williamson County uh, for about the fourth or fifth time. Our varsity team also ran in Williamson County. William Holloman finished first, and I think that uh, tied a record. Luke Murad finished uh, first on the JV run. Uh, we had a rifle classic here uh, at, on the campus this past weekend. Our seventh grade uh, team lost against a team they played that had a combination of seventh and eighth grade uh, players. Our ninth grade team uh, won at JP2, 40 to 19. And as you, most of you all know, the varsity team lost at BA, 14 to 24, a game which uh, I think uh, suggests that we could have a, a terrific comeback against them and others in the end of the season. So I hope there's a lot more to look forward to. Uh, that's all for today's assembly. Thanks for your attention.